you all doing well. Day before Florida and Missouri. Who knows what the storylines of this game are going to be. Plenty going in. What's going to be the storyline coming out? <laughs> I think that's the big... Uh, that's the big question for everybody. Is what uh, around seven o'clock? I mean, I mean, I guess we could know before then, of course. Uh, but by the time the clock hits zero, around seven o'clock on Saturday, what is going to be the main topic of conversation? But got anything you're looking for in the game itself? Hop on in here. Let me hear from you. Let everybody else hear from you. Talk big picture stuff as well still. I know that's a more popular topic right now. But there is still a game to be played. So either way, you want to talk the game, if you want to talk big picture, hop on in here. We'll have some discussion. Let's see. It's like Earl is in here. Morning, Earl. Oh yeah. Good. Um, I can't wait to the game tomorrow. You going to the game? No, no, no. I don't watch no. it on the TV. Okay. So, what you for? Well, actually, um, we won that game, but um, we I think we got to win. We got to. We got to. Yeah, yeah. We got uh, we got to win. So um, I don't want Dan Morgan to get fired. So we got to win. All right. And Joe, I want to say Joe Gators, and I want to say good luck. I want to say good luck for them. Sounds good, man. Go Gators. Yeah, you too. All right. Let's see. Coach Peer and Kerry. Starting the morning with the Go Gators. There we go. Go okay today. What up, Kerry? How you doing, man? Doing okay this morning. What you got going on? Oh, here's the work. Just uh, came here to chime in a little bit. Just to, uh, I don't know about tomorrow, day. I feel kind of iffy tomorrow, but no matter what, though, man, the Gator, I don't know, man. They let me down. This <laughs> we should. Be, we should be at least. Not, we should be, we should at least be going into the game right here with two losses, maybe three, but <laughs> at least three. But I don't know, I don't know what they what they expect from this game. I'm gonna record it, watch it, but I'm just gonna watch it and just hope hope we just no matter what happened in this game right here, I'm, my mind already set. So like. It's just a it's just a game day. I'm just gonna enjoy it, root for my team, root for the guy, you know. And just you know, I don't know, Day. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> you know, Beta gonna have a big game tomorrow. I just know that. Yeah, that's the uh that is the uh formula for a Missouri win probably is uh, Tyler Beatty and, and what he can do on the ground. Um I did on Gators Breakdown Plus yesterday. There was a Q and A I did it there. And I did lay out there's um, if you go and look at it, I won't necessarily spoil it. So I got to, you know, push some people there. So, you know, okay. uh, sh shameless plug a little bit, but there's a path there. I mean, if you go and look, um, I did the work for you, but if you know, whatever, um, yeah, if you go and look, he's racked up a whole lot of his yards on the easy opponents this year. Uh, so now granted you look at Florida's defense and you can rightfully say that's another easy opponent <laughs> when it's all said and done. So, but there is a path there. If Florida plays like they did toward the beginning of the season on defense, if they go and put up a performance, um, there's, there's a path there where Beatty can be stopped. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, but we're going by recent trends and that's why we don't necessarily feel all too great. Uh, about this Gator rush defense going against Tyler Beatty and what he's been able to do uh, at some points this season and coming off of a 200-yard game last week versus South Carolina. So, 
Uh, yeah, recent trends will say this does not look good for Florida. Another road game as well. We know how Florida has struggled on the road this year. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you tie in the rush, rush defense performances. You tie in another road game uh, where the, the, the entire team is struggling, especially Emory Jones has struggled on the road too. Yeah, you, you, you kind of find a, a path to a victory – uh, very difficult. You, you, you're finding that path difficult. But Missouri's not a great team by any means. But, you know, neither was South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. Uh, neither was Sanford last week. So that's where you kind of say, well, yeah, we, we know Missouri's not that great, but we have to sit here and look in the mirror at the same time. And there you go. That's where, that, that's where the questions come in. Yeah. I just want to see these guys play with a lot of pride tomorrow. You know, pride, passion. You know, I just want them to, I just want them to just dominate, you know, it, it, that'll, you know, that'll kind of ease a, ease a lot, but I just want to just see them just come out and just play with a, a lot of pride and passion and just, you know, just, just play hard, man, yeah. just play hard, you know, that's it, Yeah, cause, that's all I got thanks, there. Yeah, because you know what we've seen, whether it can be labeled playing hard or not, whether you believe the team has quit or not. You know, it's embarrassing no matter what it is, whether they are trying and it just looks that bad or whether they're not trying, that's embarrassing at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, you just want to go out there and see the team play better, not, uh, you know, put together a performance where it doesn't look like they're trying, whether they are or not. You don't want to ask yourself the question, yeah. has this team quit? And, you know, and a lot of people have asked themselves that uh, and you know, answered the only way they, they can, they, they, they see how. Uh, but you know, yeah, uh, you, you would like to see just a, a a better performance overall, where you're not asking yourself, "Has this team quit?" But uh, I hope we get a bowl kind of close to my house, like, <laughs> uh, make a bowl, bowl game close to where I stand, so I can go see them. But uh, I just want to say, go Gators, and I just hope we pull it all. The all right, I hear you, man. Go Gators. All right. All right, I think Coach Peer, I think you were in here if you're still there. If not, let's see. Yeah, Hello, you, you hear me? Yep, here we are. loud and clear. Yep. I don't know, man. It's been depressing, uh, yeah. yep. as we all know. Uh, I mean, but Wingo looked great. I mean, he looked like a headhunter when he played versus Sam for the few snaps I've seen him play. Uh it's like he was flying to the ball, just being aggressive. So, get guys like that in. That's I mean, that's really all I want to see now at this point. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I think you go back and look. You know, I've been a big as a person and as a as a player. Do I think is trying? I've been a big Diabate fan, but man, that was a terrible performance last week uh, versus Sanford and somebody I really expected. And yeah, he played linebacker last year. Uh, now this is the second year trying to play linebacker and it's still not working out. Um, you know, probably no fault of his. Like he probably shouldn't be a linebacker to begin with. Uh, but then you're right. You know, Wingo comes in last week and yeah, I, I know it was Sanford, but you know, the entire defense was playing bad. And if there was a certain bright spot, you know, you, Wingo, I think you throw in that, uh, you, you throw in that, you, you say, okay, there, if there was, there were not many bright spots to look at last week on the defensive side of the ball, but one guy, you know, he didn't play linebacker in high school. You know, it was a transition position for him as well. Uh, and now he's getting in there and getting a little bit of experience. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to see him more versus an SEC team and see what he could do. And now an SEC team we know is going to come in and run the ball. You know, can we find a linebacker that can play with a little bit of physicality? Can we find a yeah. linebacker that will shed some blocks? Can we fill a, find a linebacker that will fill a gap and fill a hole? That's what we're looking yeah. for. And we've, yeah, we, haven't fill- seen, we, haven't, we haven't seen it from any of the other guys. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's, I mean, I mean why not? From somebody else, yeah. Yeah, why? I mean, I mean, we're getting these four stars and you know some some five stars. Let them play. Like, I mean, the seasons, you know, it's 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 obviously a waste from from as far as the standpoint goes, but then as the standard goes, let some of these four stars play. I mean, they only got two games left, three games left, and we might uh, see more of him too because uh, you know, I'm trying to follow up. I had heard earlier in the week that Jeremiah Moon's dealing with an injury, uh, so he may not even be available uh, there. So you lose, you know, one of your guys who had been filling in for linebacker once Dentro Miller went out. Uh, so you're looking at Diabate, Hopper, Bernie, and now Wingo. Uh, but look, we know we know what 
we know what Bernie is there. You know, I think yeah. especially this time of year and where the team is at. Let's, yeah, let's go see more Wingo and and yeah. and see 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 what he brings to the table. Just because it is a tra- like I said transition position for him. So let's let him get the reps and see if linebacker is going to be a fit. If not, whoever the next DC is, who or you know head coach, whatever whatever that may be. You know, wh- whatever it is, at least they got some more film to look at and see if he, how, how he can fit into a system. If he's not going to be a linebacker, then you can shift it. If they find some belief that he can still be a linebacker, then okay, well there you go. You got some film to go by. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, just uh, yeah, see some see some kind of change in in the right way. Even, even if it looks bad, I mean, <laughs> what's, you know. what's there to lose? You know <laughs> what I mean? What are we doing? So just fill some guys in there, let them you know, let them mess around and. Try to get something going for next year. A little amount I'm going for next year. I mean, don't call it a wasted season as far as, you know. Well, coach, I mean, hey, but... that's a good point, man. I mean, because what is the mentality of the, the, the coaching staff now? Like, is it, if, you know, if – I'm not going to sit here and say they're sabotaging the season. That's not what I mean by any chance. But right. if you're looking at it different, it's, if these last two games are do and die, you know, we've talked about that on Gators Breakdown this week, Will and I. That could be a reason why Dan Mullen feels more comfortable with Emory Jones for whatever reason. On you know, we, we we know his road statistics, and I've, I've laid them out on the podcast. But he's going to go with what he feels more comfortable with. And, you know, could that be team-wide as well? There's two games left. Are you coaching for your job? You know, do we not see somebody like Derek Wingo because there's more trust in Diabate and and, and Bernie uh, and, and Hopper? You know, that, or I don't I don't know how the coaching staff uh, is going to see that. Yeah. When you sit here, probably have the mindset of we have to go win these last two games to save our jobs. Does that hold back from some of the younger guys still getting more playing time? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. I agree. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it is what it is. We got Mike White for now, so. <laughs> flip, flip, flip it the script a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, my friend. All Go right. Gators. And, Go uh, Gators. Yep. All right, let's see. Kobe Perry. I think Chase is in here as well. Hey, Dave, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Colby? Hey, how's it going, man? Um, I'm I've Mike. got a two. I've got a two part question for you. You just touched on the first part, but do next you question. Tru- next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you trust Emory Jones on the road in Como to actually get us a win? And B, is it malpractice at this point the way Damian Pierce is being utilized? Uh. I wish I could say I trusted him on the road. I don't. Uh, I've seen it too many times. I mean, every Kentucky, LSU, South Carolina. I mean, no, I just – if I said I did, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, me hope, it's me hoping. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of hope uh, right now if I, if, if I said that. There's a lot of hope for this team, you know, if I said that uh, right now. So, I, no, I mean I'm a. I got. Let me see it before I'm going to believe it. And there's nothing that I've seen on some road performances from Emory Jones that makes me think he's going to go to uh, Columbia, Missouri, and go put up a, a good performance. Um, now Missouri's defense isn't great. Neither was South Carolina's. Neither was LSU's. Uh, and yeah, you, we've seen what happens. You know, now if Florida can go run the ball, and that goes kind of to your next question, if Florida can go run the ball, and if that's Damian Pierce by what we've seen the late the trend lately then okay maybe so um there wasn't a lot of help there for Emory Jones I like we, we I've said the whole time before the season during the season he was going to need the run game for him to be as as good as he could be uh so if the run game hasn't been there versus Kentucky the run game hasn't been there versus LSU run game wasn't there versus South Carolina you're not going to put the game on Emory Jones shoulders and go win a, win, win a ball game. Now, it's just not the, the the path to a victory versus SEC teams right now. And if that, if that continues, if Damian Pierce is not getting the ball and the Florida run game struggling again, then I think we're going to see a similar performance like we did versus South Carolina and LSU and Kentucky. So um, to me, the, the two questions you ask go hand in hand. Uh, and a lot of it for Damian Pierce, too. Uh, yeah, I do think it's a little malpractice. And I'm not sitting here saying he needs to go get 20, 25 touches a game. But he should have double-digit carries almost every game. He should be getting 12, 15 carries a game, uh, basically what we've seen, uh, especially when the offense has been been struggling. You've been you – know, granted, last week is what it was. But we're talking SEC games. 
we're talking games that really count, the games that really matter, the games that we're going to judge so harshly on. And you, 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 you're looking for something to count on. You're looking for something to get the offense out of the rut. And we've seen the bright spot. We've seen the flashes of Damian Pierce um, there. So, yeah, I, I, I do think, especially where this offense has been and needing some answers, I do think it's a little bit of malpractice of him not getting the carries and trying to get something going. Because once I said, once, like I said, once that run game gets going, it, it, it's, it's been helping the quarterbacks. It's been helping Emory Jones out there. Florida's going to need that against that. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. All right. Chase is in here, but I don't think. Chase, if you do want to talk, you have to. There we go. Nah, Damian Pierce should touch the ball 20 times a game. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm not going to say he shouldn't, but I wouldn't, like, I, I'm trying to maybe set it up. Uh, a baseline expectation level. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I just don't understand. Like what? I mean, I'm sitting there watching the game, and it's like I don't know if they they base the running back rotation off of like actual plays because it seems like the guys. I can see that. Pass, like the guys in there pass blocking, and yeah. then because he's been in there, I don't know six six plays pass blocking. They're like, all right, let's get Malik <laughs> Davis. Let's give Malik Davis the carries when it should be the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's part of it too. And look, and I know Mullen has said, look, um, Greg Knox is the one who says the rule. Oh, you're the head coach. If your offense is in a rut, you, I mean, come on. I mean, should there be some kind of sit down? So there should be some kind of, you know, come uh, a meeting at some point of the game and say, okay, what what can we do to get this offense going? And you know, I don't know why he's so just reliant on. Uh, you know, trust in the, the running back rotation so far this year when it's pretty clear what has been making it go on a more cons- consistent basis. And, uh, I mean, if, if Pierce ain't getting the touches, the other person getting touches should be uh, right. Yeah, it, it, you know, it is a little tricky, uh, especially if you go back toward the beginning of the season. All these running backs that did – something nice in, in, in a lot of the games at the toward the beginning of the season. Uh, Malik Davis, you know, the, the game versus Alabama uh, comes to mind. Uh, but Damian Pierce still been, I think, the most consistent game in and game out, especially especially lately when the offense has been struggling and you're looking for answers. I think he's been the guy that you can really point to to sit here and say, okay, he just needs the ball more to help this offense go. But at points this season, I do think uh, most of these running backs have had their, had their flashes. Um, and I guess I got one question. It's not really a question. I just <laughs> it, it just blows my mind. Like, how did we get here? Like, I'm sitting mm. here on a Friday, worried about what we're gonna do against Missouri on a Saturday. Yeah, um, that's a tough one to answer. You know, there's a lot of big picture. You know, it, it starts with recruiting, and it always has to start with recruiting for me. But that's when you look at why Florida sits at five and five. That's not the sole reason this year. I mean, it, to me, it, to me, it starts there. But it's always been the things you could count on: the game management, the clock management, penalties, turnovers that you've been able to kind of count on the, the last few years. Even that's gone by uh, the wayside. It just seems like everything bad that could happen is happening, uh, and I think that, that's where a lot of it is. Uh, it, it's not just recruiting. I think, like I said, I think that's the biggest part of it. But it's, it's not just that this year. Uh, we knew there was going to be a drop off between Trask and Pitts and Tony. Didn't expect this kind of drop off. Uh, the development that we've been able to count on. Emory Jones is in his fourth year. We're not getting fourth-year Dan Mullen production of a, of a quarterback. We're not getting that. Um, Anthony Richardson's been limited. You know, the, so neither quarterback's just kind of been ready to grab the bull by the horns and take over. That's part of the issue as well. But that goes back. I mean, you can you can always trace that back to recruiting too if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, I just think – it's a it's a common you, you're not going to sit here and, and point a finger at one thing when you're five and five at florida with two games left you know that's that's the reality of it and you're not going to be able to just point at just one thing and say that's why yeah all right thanks man got it thanks, thanks man Jerry. David, what's going on, man? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. You know, talking about recruiting. 
I think um, it was brought up to me that, you know, while recruiting has suffered, it's it's pretty crazy to think about. But we actually had 20 guys that never played a down that Mullen tried to bring in. You talk about guys like Leonard Manuel, Justin Watkins, Davey Hammond. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, Tim Burrell, the guy that we talked with on Talking Sauce, Dan, you know, got guys to come in, but they just, like like I said, never played a down. 20 guys, that's a whole recruiting class. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, some of that actually has built up over the years, and now we're seeing it, you know, just completely happen. Like, we don't have the playmakers like the Justin Watkins that was supposed to be the big time, you know, guy that we can get the ball. Um, Jerry, you know, some, of the, some, of the, some of the highest rated offensive linemen Florida has had never made their way to campus, never played it down for Florida. That's crazy, man. That's yep. crazy. Uh, it's it's uh, and you can look at that a couple of different ways. You know, Mullen even admitted. I remember it was at SEC media days, and we asked him about. And this was, I think, early on when kind of the whole Dewan Black recruitment was just starting, and you know, taking a chance on. Somebody. Mullen admits, you know, he 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 takes chances on those guys. He doesn't want to give up on on guys like that. He's going to take those chances, and a lot of those chances have not paid off in Florida. No, I definitely agree. Like, you know, even with uh, Jalen Humphreys, how many times have we seen Jalen Humphreys play, bro? Yeah. It, it's it's kind of crazy to think about. You had yeah, but defensive, Langone. Yeah, defensive tackle or defensive line as well. You're in the trenches, and there's guys there, you, you Jalen Lees of the world, too. You got Johnny Brown. Yeah, I mean, there's guys, you don't, you don't see them. <laughs> yep. John, I don't think Johnny ever made it to campus. Uh, Leonard Manuel, he was another yeah. guy supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a crazy, it's a crazy thing to think about, bro. Chris Steele is another five star. We were going to have Chris Steele and and Kyrie Elam playing, you know, CB one and CB two, and look what happened. Jerry, yeah, and a lot of people will, will bring up, you know, if we if we critique them on his recruiting, where well, they'll be like, well, he was ninth in his first year and ninth in his second year, you know, that's mm-hmm. top ten classes. Okay, well, as you said, how many players actually showed up on campus and played? Also. That's not how it's supposed to go. You have your That's transition. You, you have your transition class. Okay, whatever that is, it it, it is what it is. It, it's hard, and especially in 2018, it was the first year of early signing yeah. day. Now, but top 10 class, damn, almost first. Okay, credit. You got a lot of credit. Right. Your, bump, your next class is your bump class, and the re- reason they call that a bump class is because it's supposed to bump. It's supposed to bump up. And mm-hmm. it didn't. It stayed status quo. A lot of those guys never played it down for Florida. Uh, so yeah, you can sit here and say, yeah, okay. Um, recruiting didn't fall well in a way it did you have to look at it what it's supposed what is what is supposed to happen and yep. your second class is supposed to be better but it, it, it wasn't it, it truly wasn't man and it, if anything in my opinion it probably went down a little bit you know so it's just yeah, one of those you, situations yeah, once you, where... yeah once you look at names that never played you're right man it uh that's one angle of recruiting that gets you know get, gets overlooked a little bit is all the names that florida's recruited signed uh, never playing it down for Florida. Yep, pretty much. Did you think about the game, Jerry? Tomorrow. Oh, the game, man. Um, I, you know, as everybody's pretty much saying, I really just want to see Damian Pierce get a lot of carries, but um, I don't think we play well on defense. I mean, we haven't all year, besides like maybe like one or two games. Um, I think Missouri has a very, very good running back. I, I saw their quarterback play. Um, he's a guy that, you know, will give us issues because he's slightly mobile. So um, I don't see that being a really, really good game. I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> I just want to see, you know, maybe Emory Jones and Cope kind of establish something together. Maybe yeah. we get some offense going. Maybe we can push them around a little bit in the trenches. But outside of that, man, I, I – yeah, I do want to see. If, I do want to see if Ethan White's back. That's when the the run game has been at its best um, this yeah, year. Yeah. Ho- hopefully, he's back up front. I haven't heard anything on that, and honestly, I probably shame on me. I haven't asked around a whole lot either for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll see if I can find out more today on that. But um, yeah, that's uh, if if Florida's going to run the ball, it seems like he needs to be there at left guard for the, for a lot of the success. Yeah, man, I agree. And you know, um, I don't know if Mullen's going to do because Anthony Richardson's supposed to be healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I wonder if he's gonna do the the two series, uh, Emory two series AR. Like, I wonder how he's gonna work that out tomorrow, or is he gonna yeah. ride with Emory? My thing is, you know, we've seen Emory on the road this year. Just you now, I just spoke on that plenty. If right. it's not going, you can't wait. Like, go back to the LSU game. You can't wait that long to pull the trigger. 
you know, if this is a game you're going to go try and win and, and, and get a victory, you can't wait. If Emory's struggling uh, like he did at the, in, in Baton Rouge in the LSU game, uh, the South Carolina game, I mean, look, he, he had those big passes early, but that wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. You know, we just we, – you weren't going to do that all game long. If If it seems like it's not going to be there, I do want to see how fast he pulls the trigger. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Or, or if he pulls the trigger. I don't even know if he will or not. But No, I, you know, man, I honestly, I think last week, you know, Emory, you know, breaking the record or whatever, I think Dan was kind of wanting that out of him. So that made him feel like, oh, yeah, I should ride with Emory. You know, that's something he always wanted to do anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked about it on the podcast this way. He's, he's going to want to. Um, he's, yeah. It's back up, back against the wall right now. Um, so, you know, I just – yeah, it was Sanford. You know, you we, we go back to right. You go back to you know the, the game before that was South Carolina, and not not a not a good look. So I know, I know, but um, I I don't know, man. I, I just hope the guys play with some passion at least. You know what I mean? Like going to the Sanford game last week, I saw guys just walking around after getting scored on, like no mm-hmm. fire, no energy, and that was very like discouraging to me, man. So hopefully, you know, they they play with some energy and. You know, the young guys try to make plays like Antoine Powell, uh, yeah. Mordecai McDaniel, you know, those guys. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. No problem, man. Have a good one. You too, man. All right. Who we got in here? J Rock 1982, I think that's. Dave. Hey man, good morning. So I don't, you know, I don't think uh, the you know the defensive coordinator, whatever we hire, whoever we hire, is going to fix the deep seated issues this this program has under Mullen. You know, the recruiting, as you guys have been discussing, it just isn't isn't cutting it. He's put we put for example, let's take wide receivers. We we put you know. We seem to develop them very well. We put quite a few in the NFL with Swain, um, Tony. I guess you can count Pitts. Uh, you have Cleveland. You know, a lot of guys in a short period of time, and yet we don't have wide receivers knocking down our door. Doesn't really make sense. There's something off there. Normally, when a program is putting a bunch of guys in the NFL, there's kind of a, you know, a desire for high-rated guys at those positions to want to check out that program, and we don't seem to have that. And it's kind of odd. And, you know, we had a record-breaking offense last year, so we, we showed that we can be, you know, kind of an air raid type offense. Um, it's 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 frustrating, and, and I, I'm just, you know, regardless of what happens these next few games, I really don't see how a defensive coordinator is going to fix the issues we have. I just – I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it does go deeper than you know, defensive coordinator, and you know, you, you've got to you've got to bring in a number of guys who know how to recruit, not just all right, defensive coordinator, and he knows how to recruit. In the story, no, that's that's, that's not you. You're going to have to go get a lot of dogs on the trail to kind of make up for uh, what's missing from the head the head man himself. You, you I, I don't think you can just flip a switch. Uh, and yep. Dan Muller is just going to be the guy that we want him to be in recruiting. It's just not going to happen, not going to be that way. I do think you can if you're a head coach surround yourself that way. Uh, but is it too little too late? You know, Dan Muller's reputation around high school, it's not the best. It, 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 it's really not. Um, but, you know, you, you mentioned wide receiver. And it's not not bad. I mean, you got two – Top 250 guys, I'd say, probably around there. Uh, Jaden Gibson, Chandler Smith. You know, you were definitely in the Evan Stewart uh, sweepstakes until uh, – yeah, We season. screwed up the Evan Stewart. Yeah, I know. Yep, yep. The, oh, the, play, yeah. the play and um, kind of communication and, uh, and all yeah. that as well. Um, not not the best there. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was going to look much better than it did. <laughs> at, at yeah, not, but, um, I mean, Jay- quarterback – quarterback too Mullen's supposed to be a QB guru like why aren't we landing five-star quarterbacks why aren't they like showing more interest in our program 
You know, they wouldn't, got, they wouldn't got the quarterbacks early and and and, and, and identified. I mean, it, it, right now, if Florida was to get Nick Evers committed, we'd we'd probably look at it like, oh, that's a really good pickup. But since he right. was a three, was he, since he was a three star when he committed and and rose in the rankings, people do tend to look at it different because you know he wasn't a five star to begin with. But no, I I do agree with you in the sense of. Yeah, but why is like someone like Arch Manning look, looking right. at our program? You know what I mean? Like, why right. isn't yeah. that? Right. Why is the interest there? So yeah. I don't know. You know, they, they identify and get their quarterback early. So as far as pursuit of guys like that, maybe just is not there um, when you, when you look at it. Because um, like I said, they, they've they've identified them early and went and got them. Um, so. And so, well, same, same, same thing with Richardson. You know, they got him early. He well, and then and then he rose in the rankings. Uh, so it's kind of that's kind of been the path of it recently. It's just been bizarre because offense has by far been our best performing u- unit under Mullen. Yeah, and defense has by far been the poorest performing unit. But the recruiting wise, we've recruited much better on defense than we did on offense. <laughs> it's been such a bizarre situation. And I, I, be- I believe Dan Mullen believes in you know probably to a fault that okay I can just get these guys on offense and I'll, I'll score points. I'll score points and. The other side of the ball is where you know it needs to be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, I think that's part of the big problem is he thinks he can kind of just take anyone's you know Joes and win with X's and O's and you know as Kirby kind of rightly pointed out, you you need the Joes and yep. um, I don't know, man. I just I don't I don't see it working out. I think we're just prolonging the inevitable, and we have a bad class this year. I think this is the time to take advantage of it and make this our transition class, rather than double up, have a bad class this year, next year have another bad class and set us back a few years. I just that is I, the big that is the big worry. If you do look ahead and it doesn't work next year, then then you're killing two classes. You're killing this because yeah. there's not a lot of hope for this class. Whether whether he stays or, or whether he goes, uh, right? And then and then if you bring him back and it doesn't work out next year, then we're having <laughs> what two classes in the thirties and forties. I mean, and that's <laughs> that's a big hill to climb for the next guy. So now, granted, you know, I mean, just like I mean, you know, the Michael Wayne set up that class a little bit for Mullen, so you know the, the Pearson Pitts of the world yep. um, were kind of you know already there. Uh, so it can be done. We'll see what like next year, ne- next year's class looks like. Um, but you know, granted, the trend of it is what you're looking at, and 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 not that great. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, man. Oh man, kind of weird situation. Talking game and talking big picture at the same time. <laughs> it's, uh, hopefully. Hopefully it all just gets worked out. But some good stuff this morning here on this Twitter Spaces. Go for a few more minutes if anybody else wants to get in here. Speak your mind, sound off a little bit. Let's bring Josh and Micah in. Big Dave, what's going on, brother? Hey, Dave. I'm doing doing? good, man. How about you? Doing good, man. Doing good, man. Y'all, y'all ready Pretty for another shootout tomorrow? I just kind of wanted to respond to what the last caller oh, hold on, hold on. was uh, saying. Michael, hold on. Let, 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 Josh, Josh was first. Let, 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 let Josh go. Okay, I got you. All good, guys. Yep. All good. Yep. You ready for uh, another yeah, shootout yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, I, think, I think that is the most likely case tomorrow is it will be a shootout uh, between these two teams. But neither defense uh, uh, is all that great uh, when you when, when you look at the stats and what they've been putting on the field lately. So uh, Missouri's defense, uh, and look, if you don't look at the if, – if you look at the score last week versus South Carolina, they played much better than what the score indicated uh, versus that same South Carolina offense that ran up and down on Florida the week before. Yeah, I'm I'm wanting to see a a Pierce versus Batty battle all day. Yeah, let's just, let's just eat up yards all day. Let's just see him truck some dudes and juke some dudes and get in some end zones and let's just yeah, make a party to, out of it. <laughs> seems to be the theme this morning. Of course, is uh, getting getting Damian Pierce the ball. Look, hey, Tyler Beatty is going to get all the uh, recognition from the broadcast tomorrow, probably about some of the numbers he's been be- able to put up. But maybe by the time the game is, it's. Uh, all right, well, finally, Damian Pierce gets 15, 20 carries, and there's 170 yards on the ground. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Florida's, uh, Florida's winning the game because of their running game. 
<laughs> yeah, I love Pierce, man. I want to see his last couple games, in the, you know, with this team. I just really want to see him eat and get some uh, get some love on his way out the door. Uh, he hadn't been utilized enough. Dude can eat up yards. He's uh, just seems to be a, a cool guy that, that represents the orange and blue the right way. So I, I just want to yeah, see him really and- kind of kind of show out the last couple games and, and earn his stripes on the way out the door and show out the senior ball for us. Yeah, I don't think anybody would would complain if Damian Pierce was a little more vocal uh, about everything that, that, that's played out. But he's been the ultimate teammate, says everything right, uh, and goes out there and performs uh, when he's asked to. So, uh, yeah, I'd, he'll definitely be one player I really miss, you know, in, in front of the microphone and on the field just because he, he brings it every time. All right, man. All right, I'm getting ready for work. Y'all take it easy. All right, Josh. See you, man. All right, Michael. If you're still in. Yeah, there you go. No, breaking up a little bit. You got me? Yep, there we go. You there? Yep. Okay, all right. Yeah, maybe not. All right, Mike, let's see if I can get you back in here. All right. We got one more. Couple more. All right, who's going to go now? Daniel, I think you're here. Or up and coming, let's see. I am here. I just wanted to say good morning, Gators. <laughs> I'm getting ready for this game tomorrow. Looking forward to a, a win. Hopefully. <laughs> yep, yep, hopefully, hopefully so. <laughs> and I'm really just here to listen. Uh, I don't really have much to say. I'm actually at work, but I just wanted to say good morning. Okay. Good morning, man. Thanks for uh, hopping in. Cool. All right. Who else is in here now? Up and coming. I see your mic is there, but I don't hear you. So, all right. Technology at its best. All right, Brandon, Apex player. Good. How about you? Hey, uh, I know we are a uh, air raid kind of offense. We like to pass the ball, but w- what's stopping us from running up in single back or I formation for that matter and just running the ball? Whatever happened to just run the football? Um, yeah, I mean, I, with that too, I'd like to see more two back sets. Uh, I think Florida's been a bit, su- a little successful with that out there as well. Um, no, I formation is not something that's really in the playbook. Not Dan Mullins' playbook too much. Uh, I'm not you know, Emory Jones, Anthony Richardson. I don't think it's practiced too much uh, taking snaps from under center and you know and, and turn around and hand the ball off. Uh, it's just not the not just not the offense uh, there for oh, yeah. a, a bit. So um, trying to you know I think there was a little bit of confidence in what they were being asked to do earlier in the year, and it's just not working. Uh, right. You know, it's, it's just uh, you did have more of an air raid air attack last year and. Uh, this year, kind of a blend of both, uh, I guess you could say, of a more traditional Dan Mullen offense. And it was trying to take elements from uh, that offense we saw the last couple of years with Kyle Trask as well and trying to just mix them together uh, a bit and, and, and come up with something there. But, yeah, not, not, not consistent. I do think even, you know, even dating back to the South Carolina game a couple of weeks ago and with their defense, I mean, did they stuff the run? They did. But I do think Florida – and a lot of it was RPO based too, so you're asking your quarterback to make that decision um, of, of when to pull it and when the and it, it worked a little bit to begin with. Uh, but I do think sometimes you just got to stick with your bread and butter. Like Florida's not going to throw the ball 35, 40 times a game to win a ball game with, with, with Emory Jones. And uh, granted, I know the the run game was getting stuffed a bit, but sometimes I think even those num- numbers say don't do it. You've got to be able to show a certain physicality. And you know, Florida didn't have any problems running when teams were stacking the box toward the beginning of the season. And as I said, Ethan White's been a big miss 
so far with, since he's been out with an injury. That offensive line, the run game works much better when he's there. Uh, so that has affected it a bit. But I do think there's sometimes when you just really got to stick with it because I, I just still think that's Florida's best path to best path to a victory. Right, and now and now onto the um, <clears throat> this game this weekend. Um, defensively wise, why? Why is it that, that we cannot just stop that counter play that LSU ran against us? We just can't stop that counter with them pulling guys. I mean, everybody's seen it on film, and now they're running it against us and killing us, slashing us. I don't that's understand a, how we can't how we can't defend that. Yeah, it's the magic question. It's one question. play. Yeah, it's the magic question, man. I, I, I don't have any answers. I don't have any answers to stopping it. I mean, just <laughs> – you, you hope they practice it. You hope they go over it uh, in, in preparation during the week. Uh, you, you think they would, uh, but teams have been able to like shift and vary it just a bit. And I, I guarantee you, we're gonna we're gonna see that right off the rip too. I, I oh, know I they would. watched film on it. I would too. I would too. I, I, yeah, I would until Florida proves they can stop it. Um, so strong yeah. safety is responsible for that hole, and Dean oh, is God. constantly yeah. in the wrong yeah. spot. Yep, yeah. that's been a bar- part of it too. That's why I wouldn't mind. And, and, and it's hard in today's college football sometimes to go three linebackers on the field. Uh, I, we saw it t- a tiny, tiny bit this year. But you're basically asking Trey Dean to be a third linebacker at times, and it is not working whatsoever. No, it's it's not. And and the only other thing I got is, is it, you know, we're supposed to be DBU and stuff, but why do we keep our corners 10 to 15 yards off the receiver? I don't – I don't. do we not jam players anymore? Do we not man up that's anymore? Been, yeah, that's been a – a, a bit better this season, but still an issue. Um, I just don't think there's trust. There's not a lot of trust, I don't think, from this coaching staff to the players uh, and asking them to do. I just I don't think there's a lot of trust either way. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't. I prefer you know those guys play tighter coverage, and you know you try to use their athletic ability too. But then you get into these coaches are scared to death of being beat over the top. Uh, I mean, I would rather be. I, I, I mean, I would rather just give up one than just constantly get ten yards, ten yards, fifteen yards. Yep. Because I mean, they're just running, just marching down the field because we won't get in nobody's face as a corner. Yeah, there's 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 no aggressiveness there. They're just waiting for the offense to make a mistake, and these offenses aren't making mistakes uh, too much, uh, especially then, when they can, especially when they can run the ball like they have been. That's yep. that's been that's been making it a whole lot easier for these offenses. They don't they're not having to put the ball in the air. Uh, they're putting the ball in the air when they want to because they can run the ball. Uh, so that's um, that, that's been the biggest issue is just no no trust there. Team's been able to run the ball. And so, just, when, so, when you so can you run the ball, you can pick your poison. So you say there's no trust. Do you think that's what's kind of caused the disconnect between the players and the coaches? And why they, I don't know if the team has quit, but it sure feels like it has. Yeah, that, that, and that's a good point. I don't think they've necessarily quit. I just don't think there's a lot of confidence. I don't think there's a lot of confidence either way. I don't. Uh, I mean, D. Bade's comments after the LSU game—that was no mistake. I mean, uh, and I think he speaks for a lot of players on that defense. I, I don't think there's a lot of cut or was. Uh, didn't look like there was a lot of confidence last week either in the, in the shift and the change going to, to Christian Robinson. So yeah, I don't think these players believe in this defense. I, I think that's what it boils down to. Man, you got to believe in your team no matter what you got. It is a coach, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you, you think they could – I mean, that, well, that's, part, that's part of the reason there's a change made. Uh, there, there's a disconnect. Uh, there's Todd Grantham and or C. Rob right now. Maybe we can extend it that far. They don't have answers, whether it be the way they've recruited and just don't have guys to fit what they want to do or the guys just can't do what they're asking them to do. Uh, there, either way, either way, there's a disconnect, and that that's part of the issue. And that's why there's going to be big changes on that side of the ball. Well, uh, thank you for having me, and uh, as always, go Gators. Go Gators. Sorry, David. Dave, can I talk about that counterplay for one second? Yeah. All right, so I've watched it on film quite a bit, and so the the the, the tackle on the guard are pulling around. The outside linebacker and the middle linebacker are responsible for hitting those two players. And then the, the strong safety is responsible for coming in and filling that gap where that, where that running back's going to be going into. Um, Dean is almost never there. Yeah. Like he's either still 10 yards back or he's following. I don't know what he's following. He's moving to the other side of the field. He apparently has no idea what is going on at his counter place. And, it's, and he single handedly is responsible for a big chunk of. What's gone wrong on those plays? Oh, yeah. From what I've seen, on- yeah, 
And I remember going back to the – and I don't like to call players out, pinpoint players a whole lot. That South Carolina game, the effort I saw from trading as well was awful. Um, and I, I, I like I hate pinpointing in, in that because he's not the only one. We've seen it all around uh, this, this defense. But, you know, you, you brought him up and kind of the problems and the issues – uh, that was one I saw in the South Carolina game. It was just a, a, a pure effort and a little like interest in, in, in stopping a play. Oh, right. David, I did want to ask a question. Uh, you know, there was a lot of talk in the beginning of the year about Grantham, about the coaching. But as I would say after Georgia and then it leading into South Carolina, you know, uh, I follow Jacques Green and Reed L. Anthony and, Brandon Spikes and them, and uh, I see what they're saying, and I don't want to put words in their mouths, but the, it just seems like they're almost in agreement, if I could read the tea leaves here, that maybe the players just aren't as good as we thought they were. And, and again, I'm not trying to put words in their mouths, it's just the, the, the comments I see from former Gators, it's almost as if they're not necessarily blaming the, the defensive coordinator or the coaching staff. It's more they're, they're – expecting the team to step up more as players. What are your thoughts on that? And am I reading it wrong? No, I, mean, I think there's some truth to that. But didn't we say the same thing when, you know, Jim McElwain was head coach in 2017? And, okay, well, these players aren't that great. And then Dan Mullen steps in and, okay, automatically they start producing. I mean, all right, we, uh, I can't tell you how many times I heard Freddie Swain and Josh Hammond. Those guys are nowhere near as good as what we thought they were. They're near, nowhere near as good as their recruiting rankings. And then the right guy comes in and, and gets the most out of them. Uh, you know, I think on the defensive side of the ball, I think um, I do think recruiting is a bit of an issue. Just as far as yeah, there was there were there were some good recruits, there were some good numbers uh, in who you were bringing in, but you brought in too many buck outside linebacker types that. Uh, now Florida lacks that true linebackers, and we know we we called that issue. Everybody called that issue uh, that it was going to be an issue once David Reese left, uh, and you know, Ventura Miller gets hurt, and you're like, well, where Florida's going to point to now to go get some physical ability there at linebacker, not these tweener types. Okay, we saw that issue, and then um, Florida brings in some DBs, um, and DB. As for whatever reason, falling by the wayside, whether that be a development, whether that be a coaching, you still got Kyrie Elam out there, a, a five star who's going to be drafted uh, pretty high in the NFL draft. And I think his stock has fallen a bit this year. Uh, but he's still going to be a high uh, round one, round two uh, draft pick, more than likely. Uh, there and Jason Marshall comes in and does some nice things as a true freshman, but Florida's nowhere near uh, with DBU. They're not getting the production out of the safety position that you would expect at the University of Florida. And you know, trading they 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 bring him in and he's moved all over this defense. I can't find a place where uh, he uh, looks to, to 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 better his ability to play to play to his ability. Uh, and maybe I don't know. Maybe they misevaluated the, the the ability. No matter where they stuck him, he struggled. Um, it has looked like it was getting better for a bit, and then all the issues we see with this defense. I think you know Trey Dean's probably one of the perfect examples of it. Uh, trying to stick him. I mean, look, he got forced into action when Marco Wilson went down early in his career. So okay, you, know, you, you give him a pass for that. Then they try him at nickel to replace Chauncey Gardner Johnson. That didn't work out. Now Florida's got issues at safety. Okay, so let's try him at safety. That's where he played at. That's where he had some experience at in high school. That didn't work out either. Uh, it's just a, maybe a, a misidentifying what you can do with the talent that you brought in. Uh, and I think that that's been the biggest issue for me. You've brought in some highly rated guys on defense, but the guys that either played a different position in high school and you're trying to fit them in somewhere else or just maybe misidentifying. And the guys just not being as good as – you know what we thought and part of that is development as well uh you know recruiting rankings speak for themselves most of the time you get that um it, it, it turns out more times than it doesn't so i think you know you start pointing the the, the uh the arrow you start pointing the finger at where's the development at from that side of the ball uh maybe it's hard to develop players that you have as identified as tweeners or different position types and, you know, that, that's, that's an issue in and of itself as well. So identifying and development, that's been, I think, the biggest issues on defense. I have another question. How good is Kamari Gamble? I'm liking this guy. I want to hear your thoughts on Gamble as a tight end. 
Yeah, I, I thought that he'd be more of like a safety valve um, when the when the offense has been struggling this year. But I think teams have picked up on that. Uh, we know a lot of the we saw his big coming out party uh, this year. You know, we we wondered toward the beginning of the year where is the production from the tight ends when you played FAU and USF. Well, Florida was saving that aspect of the offense for Alabama. They put it on film a bit, and I think teams found out uh, how to. Uh, how to uh, stop those plays kind of consistently there. Uh, so, But you still see the performance every now and then from the tight end position. I did think that would be more of a you – know, not Kyle Pitts-like, you know, of course. That's just unrealistic to expect anything like that uh, and to duplicate anything like that. But I did think um, – and, and not just based off of Brewster's comments in the preseason. Of course, he was high on his, on his uh, position group. Uh, but I did think it would be part of – a um, something Emory Jones and or Anthony Richardson would be able to count on consistently. Uh, and I think teams picked up on that uh, a bit. But there were also times when Kamori Gamble was streaking down the, you know, down the seam of the uh, play design, down the seam of the field, just wide open, and he's never seen. The ball's never thrown his way. Um, it's one read to the opposite side of the field, and the quarterback never comes back around to him. So I do think uh, there have been times when we've seen, we should have seen even more production from the tight end, and not really based on their fault, just because the ball just doesn't go their way. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Gamble is open a lot on yeah, film. A yeah. lot. And ball is just not there. All right, one more Levi Potter here. Then I will call it an episode. If Levi's in here. How's it going, hey, Dave? Good, man. How about you? Doing good, man. I promised to keep it PG-13 today. <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> hey, uh, just a question. Um, will Will Emory be a graduate after this year, you know, with academics and everything? Will he earn a degree? I believe so. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I, I do think that's uh, in, the, in the cards uh, right here. So he would be uh, – yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. And, and- – you're breaking, you're breaking up there, Levi. All right, one more time. I hear you. Hear me, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Sorry, I was going through a little, going through a little mountain area there. Um, All good. You know, Emory's been, he's represented our school the way you want to, the way you want. I leave. I think we'll have to call it there, man. You keep going in and out, but I can probably get the gist of uh, what you were were throwing out there. And yeah, um, some of the off, off, also kind of maybe this week based on a lot of the comments out there. Uh, all right, leave. I'll try one more time. I can hear you there. <laughs> all right, maybe not. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, one thing, if yeah, for the comments of uh, you know Emory Jones' brother this week and. Uh, Garrick McGee saying, you know, a lot of the um, comments she's had to thrown her way uh, at football games this year, basically saying she can't come to games anymore because of, uh, you know, comments and actions thrown her, thrown her way at games. You know, unfortunate there. You never, uh, never want to attack, um, verbally attack, of course. Um, players, parents, and all that stuff for, you know, w- what's happening on the field. Eh, that's taking it a bit too far. Um and unfortunate that that happens. Uh, but Anthony, you know, Emory Jones, not Anthony Richardson, Emory Jones got his chance this year. Uh, I know it hasn't went the way many predicted, many thought it would. Unfortunately so. Um, and we'll see what that means. Uh, I, if you ask me right now, I don't, I don't think he'd be at Florida next year. Uh, I think this would be his year. I think um, whether that be – um, going and trying somewhere else and, and, and playing 
and, and, and taking his chances somewhere else. Uh, I'd be surprised if he was back at Florida next year. Uh, I think it would be Richardson's job to uh, take in his brain. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, wouldn't be the first time. Won't be the last time. Um, that's just kind of the, the direction I see it going uh, right right now. If uh, Levi, that's where you were going with that. But, yeah, I mean, you couldn't have asked for uh, you know, Embry Jones to, to kind of handle everything the right way this year. It's I mean, Of course, has not been easy. Uh, with the way things have played out. Uh, but still a great teammate. Him and Anthony Richardson, great friends. You can see that friendship uh, each and every week. Both have handled, I think, this quarterback situation in front of the microphone, behind the scenes, about as well as you can. Uh, and credit to both of those guys as well, because it's not easy. Uh, <laughs> you got people like me sitting here critiquing every every move uh, and decision out there. So credit to those guys out there for uh, you know representing the university the right way and, and, and attacking um, you know, practices and, and, and the games the way they should. It may not work out and the, the way we want it to, but uh, credit to both of those guys and Emory Jones for, you know, waiting this time, uh, not working out. It's got to be tough sitting around and, and waiting four years and you get your shot and it just doesn't go uh, the way you dream and, and, and expect of. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully these can end the season on a high note. Maybe in this Florida career on a high note, who knows what the future holds there. Uh, but I, you know, I wish nothing the best for for, for Emory Jones in, the, in these next couple of games. And if Anthony Richardson gets in there, uh, him to go perform uh, as well. So, all right, there we go. I'll end it right there. Thanks, Dave. That's exactly what I was going <laughs> okay, for. Man. Glad I could get enough of it to kind of see the direction there. Um, so, everybody, thank you so much for hopping in here on this uh, Twitter Spaces. And uh, always a good time, good conversation this morning here, talking a little bit of Missouri, talking big picture as well as we wind this season down. So let's uh, see what the next couple of weeks hold. Let's see what tomorrow holds, Florida, Missouri. And um, hopefully we got to just go out there, put a performance there. Uh, we can watch and have a little bit of fun with. So that'll do it for this Twitter Spaces episode. Everybody check out the Missouri preview on Gators Breakdown if you haven't done so yet. Check out Gators Breakdown Plus as well if you haven't. There's some more extra content uh, there, Q&A episode up, and um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff there on the Discord chat, having some chats there uh, on the Discord server. So everybody, thank you so much for this listening to this Twitter Spaces. Thanks, Thanks guys, and uh, I'll catch you later on.